Hey, this is Pete from 21st Century Prepper. This week's podcast is about hurricane preparation. Uh, that season's coming up, uh, rolling up pretty quick here, and uh, after last year, uh, you just never know what's going to happen. So, uh, joining tonight is Skip. Hey, everybody. And Eric. Hey. So, uh, you guys are in a much more hurricane-prone area than I am. Uh, if I'm having a hurricane, it's a bad day yeah that's not, for that's everybody not and <laughs> everywhere because <laughs> i'm in the upper midwest so um you guys are on the east coast obviously you've been through some uh, hurricanes before with sandy and whatever and just your nor'easters are yeah sometimes could almost be they're hurricane yeah, they're category storm at least so um let's start out with um obviously situational awareness is everything for Everything. I mean, you have to be a situation where when you're driving down the road and in, in your house, whatever, even on a normal day. But uh, in these seasons, like tornado season in the Midwest here and uh, hurricane season along the coasts, um, where do we want to start? With uh, obviously following uh, weather services. Yes. My, and, uh, my advice online. is uh, the first thing is to like the Facebook pages of you know National Hurricane Center. Uh, there's the Hurricane Hunters and uh, some of the bigger websites for uh, Tropical Tidbits and uh, Mike's Weather Page. And uh, you, no hurricane should ever come to a surprise as an, to anybody. You know, yeah. you should know 15 days out, there's something tropical wave that just came off the coast of Africa and she's raising hell out there and you should start paying attention. And, uh, yeah. That's that's my big advice for anybody that's on the East Coast and even the Gulf. I mean... You know, sometimes you get storms that literally come off of South America, travel north, they become a category one or two hurricane real quick and hit Florida or someplace in the Gulf. So uh, my first and foremost is if you're on the East Coast, uh, go to 21stCenturyPrepper.net. We have all those listed uh, under page links, and uh, that's a really good place to start. Okay. Um, part of the big prep uh for hurricane season, obviously, is having supplies on hand, whether you're going to stay, whether you think you're going to stay, because you never know what they're going to be when they come ashore. Um, what are the, some of the prod, uh, one of the, some of the items that you should have on hand uh, early? I generally like to uh, keep some plywood on hand, tarps, plastic, uh, make sure that I have plenty of fuel for generators or if it gets to the point where I think it's going to be too bad that we have to leave, um, I like to have a couple gallons of uh, gas on hand to put in the truck to take with me. Um, two by fours are always in demand. You know, I like to use screws over nails um, because you can reuse them over and over again. Um, being here on the East Coast, we have a fair fair amount of times that we have to reuse stuff over again and there's no sense in going out and buying brand new yeah, i like to walk around the property and check out you know my tree limbs see if any look like they could come down um you know just do a general police of the area batten down your your uh lawn furniture tuck your trash cans away um you know make sure all gates and and everything are are closed and, and secured and, and, uh, you know, just do a visual inspection of your, your house itself. Look at, look at the siding, um, look at possible problems with your roof. You know, if, if there would be a problem, then you'd have your tarps to cover it up and your two by fours to go on and, and such. Mm -hmm. And if you have a generator, or if you're going to get a generator, make sure it works. Yes. <laughs> make sure yes, it runs. Yes, yes. You don't want to, you don't want to go out there the morning, after uh, you've lost power and try to start your generator and it doesn't start, that well, would uh, that would suck. So on that note, uh, get anybody it that does have a generator, I'll say it right now: learn how to clean the carburetor, learn how to clean the jet, because I guarantee it's going to get gummed up if you don't have that thing running, you know, some kind of constant a lot. So make sure you know how to take that fuel bowl off and clean the jet, clean the carburetor, and get that junk out of there. And keep the yeah. generator far from windows, doors. Yes. Yeah. Um, even if they're closed, you can still get CO2 leached through, um, you know, if, if it's on a on a, a leeward side of your house where, you know, you're not getting much wind and rain, 
it'll still, it could still have the ability to, uh, you know, wind up giving you carbon monoxide. Yeah, and poison. never even even if you put it in your garage with the door up, you know, and I've seen my neighbors do that. I've seen generators explode. You know, their engines, they blow up. You know, stuff happens. If that thing goes up and starts to fire in your garage, well, then you're really screwed. So never, ever, ever run a generator indoors. Even if you think it's safe because you got your garage door open and the back window open and everything else. That's just a really bad idea. That's good advice, sir. I would, I would, I, I would probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen a Honda generator come unglued one time. And when I say it come unglued, I mean that rascal come unglued. So <laughs> that, was, uh, that was eye-opening. Yeah. Yeah, I know it suck. Oh, every hurricane's passing through and uh, my house is on fire. But, what more can go wrong? <laughs> well, we'll say you should have your fire extinguisher right next to your, you know, in that area too. But oh yes, yes, that's very important. Yes, yes. fire extinguishers all over the place. So. <laughs> uh, a couple other things in the house, just like in Tornado Alley here, uh, know where your gas shutoff valve is in case yes. there's issues. Um, throw your breaker um, on your electrical panel. Uh, water, obviously, you shut off valve for your water if you know where that is. Um, cause you know, if the water is still pumping through the system and let's say half your house goes away or <laughs> even just the bathroom and then exposed pipes are shooting water out everywhere, uh, you want to get that turned off. Uh, what else is there? Um, if water on hand, obviously yeah. not just to drink, but also to flush your toilet. Um, and you don't have to go out and buy 24 packs or 30 packs or. I'm sure Sam's Club will probably come out with that. Fill your tub up someday. Yeah, fill your tub up, fill your <laughs> you tub up. I, I got 15,000 gallons sitting in my backyard right now in the pool, you know, think outside of the in box. In the pool, yeah, stuff, yeah. yeah. But you, you can use containers in your house. If you're going to yeah. flush the toilet with some bunch of water and you got a trash can, like a 13-gallon trash can that you use in some room that you don't use a whole lot and it's not full of trash, fill it up with water because you're just if you're just going to flush the toilet, it doesn't have to be clean water. The toilet doesn't care if it's yeah, flushed right. with clean water or dirty water. It doesn't, as long as you don't have big chunks of something. Well, uh, on that note, I'll, I will say that if you have a septic tank, you have to be careful with some of that, too, because if you're flooding here like we did in Sandy yeah. and you have torrential yeah. flame, r- rain, um, don't flush it too many times. You know, I hate to say that, but uh, if you're already getting oh, groundwater yeah. going into there and it backs up all of a sudden, boy, you don't want that in the middle of a hurricane. If it's yellow, let it mellow. Yes. If it's brown, flush it down. You know, it's, it's a good adage to go by. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> well, remember, we it, have, I'm, it, I'm in Minnesota. A lot of a lot of lake homes and lake cap. You know, where, you know, that's. I bet you that's every fifth cabin on a lake. There's a sign, there's a little <laughs> plaque above the toilet <laughs> stating that exact fact. So, right well, remember, <laughs> It'd be a good time to get your septic system pumped out right now too prior to the season True. so come in if you get it pumped out come in have someone come in pump it out that way you're good to go for the summer so well remember you're you're in a uh, a hurricane si- situation and it is raining so worst come to worst you get a couple five gallon buckets and and put a rock in them and yeah. collect water that way too yeah. um, oh oh yeah yeah definitely you just put them under your drain spout Exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. There's no shortage of water in any hurricane. <laughs> That's for damn yeah, sure. Yeah. So you, you don't have to be one of those people running out that they show in the news at last minute. Please don't be one of those people running out and buying lumber at the last minute or buying water and standing there going, well, wasn't it you We're out of water. You tried to get a we're, generator. Uh, yeah, out. Eric actually you has a story. I mean, water is water's good for a long time. And, and, you know, you throw it, don't have it sitting out in the sun and you're front of your house or whatever by the bay window but tuck it in the in the closet and it's good for a year or more you know so and you can drink it and you can give it to your pets and whatever and then go buy another case so it's it's just water it's not gonna well eric actually has a really good story that can teach uh, people a, a lesson here about uh right before a hurricane i'll let him go into that um yeah i think it was sandy you know, I'm the king of overkill. I have backups for my backups. Well, the only thing I didn't have at the time was a generator. And uh, we went all over the eastern shore looking for a generator, and nobody had one. I called up to Pennsylvania to some relatives to see if they could get a generator. 
As far up as Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, they were all sold out. I lucked out Mm. and was just, it was a last ditch effort. I was driving by a a lumber store and uh, ran in and asked them, I said, do you have any generators left? Well, they only had like a a 1000 watt generator, but it was enough that if I did lose power, I could either, I could cycle it between the refrigerators and the freezers, or I could use it to watch TV if we did lose power. So I did get lucky, but after the hurricane season was over, as soon as our one big box store had them on sale, I went out and bought one. So now I have two, but you know, it, like like Skip said, you know, these are not tornadoes. You know well in advance. They're they're like winter storms, you know. You sh- you should have more than enough time to get uh prepared. Absolutely. And hurricane season happens every year. Now you don't always get a hurricane. Um but if you buy one this year and you happen to not use it, it's like a snowblower. Uh, I'm going to buy a snowblower. It's not going to snow that year. But next year, you might get hit with three of them. You know, look at last year. Uh, it was Florida got hit a couple of times, you know, quickly. So it, it's it's a wise investment to do to get. And if, if anything, you, if you have a nice one, you can use it to whatever. Go off and have a party in the park or use it <laughs> for camping or whatever, you know, and uh, – well, that's something we didn't touch on also is uh, make sure you have thought through a way to cook and things after a hurricane. Because, look, I mean, where we live here on the uh, East Coast, it's nothing but pine trees and sand. And all the above power lines, are, they're getting tore up. It, 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 they're just getting tore up. And, you know, you've got a barbecue grill that's gas. Well, make sure your gas is filled up for that if you've got a... a an LP gas camp stove or something, just make sure you've got your stuff that you need there for that because uh, you're going to be without power. How long? I can't say, but uh, my experience with Sandy, what was it, eight days, nine days? I think it was eight or nine days without power during Sandy. Isabel, I was out for close to a week. You know, you, it's really fend for yourself. It's the wild, wild west. So uh, you need to make sure you have the ability to do the things to take care of yourself. Yeah, go out and... Snag a, an extra LP tank for your yes. uh, gas grill or get a nice big old 100 pounder. I, would, oh, yeah, I, I need to get a couple of those bad boys because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to reel out an LP heat in, in the winter. So I need I need to have a lot of gas to, you know, if I have to have some uh, extended uh, power outage at all. Uh, I need to have a lot of gas on hand. So, uh, okay. We covered a lot of prior to a hurricane. Uh, also, well, evacuating or staying, um, obviously that's up to the individual. Uh, you, if you feel confident that your house can handle it, depending on what the size of the storm is, obviously. Um, get out as soon as you can. Don't wait till the last minute. Uh, like Eric said, he's got extra gas on hand, so you don't want to have to drive three blocks to get gas. Uh, and stand in stand in line for four hours because everybody else is doing the same thing. You can just drive on by and laugh because uh, you got an extra twenty gallons in your in your back of your truck or your uh, wherever trailer or something if you got a trailer. Um, and just and get out, get out as soon as you think you need to. Uh, I wouldn't waiting to the last minute. You're just gonna ride through the hurricane on a highway. If you hear the cop knock Which on your door suck. and tell you it's mandatory <laughs> evacuation, you've waited too long, because yeah, he, yeah, I, <laughs> you know, and I, especially I mean, in Florida, yes, but Florida, you know, Mississippi coast, uh, you know, you, you can, you can, I mean, a, a hurricane is a tornado that lasts for two days, really, yeah, and uh, yeah. you know, with more rain than you can imagine, and they spawn tornadoes. That's what people don't realize, and. uh if you hear that cop knock on your door, you 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 really need to not be there, I guess. And, and flooding's a huge issue. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, and you need to be aware of low areas. If, if you drive a particular road all the time and there's a low area that, boy, if we get a lot of rain, that's going to flood. Stay away from that area, especially if it's been raining for a couple of days already, because it may be underwater already and you're screwed. Um, 
but yeah, uh, especially, especially people in Florida because of the, the in lower Florida, it's that, you know, you only have certain, a few ways to get out of Florida. Uh, you know, it's not like you're in Mobile, Alabama and you can go, you have to go north, but you have, you can spread out and take numerous routes out of the area. In Florida, you're kind of in a funnel and everybody else is in the same funnel. So unless you had a plane yeah. <laughs> or know someone with a plane, <laughs> uh, you plan on getting out when you can. And, uh, you know, that obviously your work is an issue. You know, uh, kids, I, I don't know about schools, systems, if you take kids out because the storm's coming and the school is, yeah, I don't think they would naysay it too much. You know, but. honestly, and I hate to say this, but I've run into this before. It was, I think it was Isabel or Irene. People, are, employers can be real dickheads about this stuff because, like, you know, I've, I was working closer to the Chesapeake Bay, so obviously they're only going to see 30-mile-an-hour winds, and I'm like, man, I'm 12 miles from the coast, so I'm getting 80s, 90s, 100s. And, uh, yeah. you know, make sure you talk to your boss well in advance or your, you know, something like that. Say, look, if we're getting a storm, I'm going to have to do what I have to do the day before, or two days before or something like that. Because, uh, that, that was actually a big issue for me in uh, the early two thousands, uh, where they just didn't seem to understand that I was going to have hundred plus mile an hour winds when they were getting a breezy day with some rain. Yeah. 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 That would suck. <laughs> I try to. They don't understand your situation, and that would uh, be a, a crappy deal. But you got to do what you got to do. It's your family. That's, right. That's why you're working, is to, you know, for your family. So otherwise, you could be a bum someplace doing whatever you want to do <laughs> uh, if you didn't have a family. So I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm leaving because I can't come to work today because I'm evacuating because of the hurricane. Um, to fire me if you want, but I'll. <clears throat> I'll be uh, talking to a lawyer after I get it back. So, uh, insurance, um, yes. double, uh, check with your insurance a- agent about all that stuff. Flood insurance is not the typical insurance everybody has. So, uh, look into that kind of stuff. Um, find out if you've got the right type of policy that you need for your house and your property, not just your house. I mean, everything, cars and be you know, boats, if you have a boat or. Uh, extra buildings on the property or whatnot. Make sure uh, you have your insurance uh, is is the right insurance for you. Uh, that goes to our the our Bob idea that I have is to have that flash drive of information on you, your uh, financial information, your insurance information. Medical. Just so you know, Eric's sitting here grinning, uh, shit eating grinning ear to ear because he had that on his <laughs> notes list. <laughs> Oh, sorry. No, you're good. You're good. But I, I recently talked to an insurance uh, adjuster. He goes out and covers these storms. He comes down after a storm and, you know, or after a major event. And uh, I said something about a flash drive of information. And he just was like, oh, man, if you know how much easier that would make my job to get your poli- to get your claim in faster and more, you know, uh, accurate and also he said also it's it's a horrible thing these people have lost everything and you sit there and go here fill this out right and hand them a piece of paper he said it's the the stress on people after they've lost you know everything that they possess uh to a wildfire or a hurricane or whatever he said it's it's horrible if they can you know, I hand them a piece of paper and they smile at me and hand me a flash drive back and say, you fill it out. Right. Uh, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sign it. Here's my stuff. You know, <laughs> he's, he's like, that would be the, if everybody did that, he said that would be the greatest thing that could happen for Cause people would get more on their claim because you're sitting at a, a <clears throat> card table under a tent, you know, with a bunch of people, that are in the same circumstance you are and you're trying to remember what the hell you have. You know, it's just, it, it's, it said, yeah, the information on a flash drive would be perfect. Well, that's another thing so we probably easier. ought to talk about here is when you're evacuating is to have a plan of things that you want to evacuate with. Again, yeah. just no hurricane should ever come as a surprise to anybody because, you know, we just said in the beginning. So, you know, do you want to take your family 
yeah. pictures, wedding albums, uh, kids' first pair of booties, you know, uh, yep. checkbooks, uh, insurance policies, things like that. Those are things that you should have in your mind um, and maybe have a checklist. Uh, I, I don't, so I probably need to think about that. Of things that you are throwing in your vehicle when you've got to go. And, uh, you know, I would definitely recommend to anybody that if you hear category four or five, you get the hell out of Dodge. But, you know, that's up to you. Uh, I have a category three and I go just because where I live, uh, I get some shitty winds anyway. So I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to stick around for 180 mile an hour. That's just not happening. Well, the only time I ran from a hurricane. My kids were probably in their eh, eight, nine, ten year range, and uh, we were actually living like I could spit into the ocean from where I was. And that's the only time I've ever gone, um, fortunately or, un- or unfortunately. I've worked in the public sector for a lot of my life, and and my my family's learned how to deal with with. Uh, you know, nor'easters, hurricanes, because I've been out on the road, you know, doing what I have to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, don't, you can't take safety for granted. Um, you know, high floodwaters and you want to get out and look around your, your, uh, neighborhood. Keep in mind, manhole covers do pop off. Right. Yes. And, and oh, we, yeah. the, the one area that I worked, we almost lost a little kid. Uh, because the water was up to their dad's knees and the kids just running around playing and halfway fell into an open manhole. Um, you know, I know it sounds corny and, and everybody thinks that they can, they can wade through water. They can drive through water, you know, I turn around, don't drown. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, it's just, it's not worth it. Um, I know you're curious. I know, you know, you've probably been in your house cooped up for two, three days while this thing's you know, raging, but just use common sense when you're out there. Yeah, and if you got floodwaters, you don't want to be walking around in it anyways, no. because if you get a cut, I mean, you're talking septic systems backing up, sewers backing up. I mean, uh, after Sandy, we had a do not drink your water warning for our wells because we had flooded so bad down here. There's a there's a couple cities down in um, southern peninsula here, Crisfield and so on and so forth. It was like a month before their water tested okay again to be drinkable uh, because of the bacteria okay. levels in there. And I mean, if you got six inches of water in your yard and it crushes your wellhead and it's pouring down your well, and then the first thing you do is you get power and you're like, oh, I'm going to pull, you know, get a glass of water and make macaroni and cheese with fresh water. Well, you need to really th- rethink that, you know, flush your lines. Uh, uh, that water's, it's nasty, man. I mean, you can be talking salt water from the ocean, brackish water from the whatever, and, you know, wastewater treatment yeah, plants wastewater overflow. Treatment plant. Yeah. Well, you know, and oh, yeah. and that's not just for for private wells. That's that's public water system too. Um, you know, there again, I've had experience with with uh public sewer plants uh being flooded and you know, it's 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 a serious thing. You need to you need to as Skip likes to say, think outside the box. Yes. You know, what what could happen? Yep, what can happen? Cuz it does. It really does. And also, I'll say, if you, again, if you live in a tree area or something like that, have a chainsaw on hand if, if you, or at least a bow saw or something like that. Um, and make sure you don't park your vehicle under a tree. Yeah. That was- <laughs> or at least have a neighbor who has a chainsaw and you have coffee. Yeah. Or beer. Yeah, coffee or beer. Yeah. <laughs> or <right>. some steaks. <laughs> so you're like, hey, Bob, come on over and <laughs> cut down this tree. I'll grill some steaks. And then here's a, you know. After he cuts down the tree. Yeah, right, right, obviously. So. <laughs> well, really. Okay, so uh, let's Go ahead. touch on a little bit more of the during um, as far as if you stay. Well, I'll give Sandy as an instance for me because that was the most recent that we've had. Uh, the rain and wind came out of the south, and uh, that's where my living room is on the end of the house is on the south. And I have never heard rain hitting my house like that in my life. Now, if you've got kids, um, that can be very concerning for them. It's a scary ordeal. Uh, I would recommend, you know, playing a game, playing music, put on uh, kids bop or something like that to chill them out. Because it is, if you know, everybody describes the sound of a freight train when it comes to a, a tornado. Live through a Category mm-hmm. 2 or 3 hurricane. And just that alone is an intimidating sound. So, mm-hmm. uh Make sure you have something there in place for the kids. 
make sure you have your garage doors braced. I've said this in the Tornado podcasts numerous times, and I'm going to say it here too. If you brace your garage door, or if you don't have your garage door braced rather, and it comes in, your garage becomes a big tear parachute, the walls blow out, end of story. If you look at look at a whole bunch of pictures from Category 2 hurricane damage with wind damage, because just go Google it, and you're going to see garage doors failed, and that section of the house is torn off. So, again, brace your garage doors. Have something to do. Have card games. Have everything in your house. If, you know, we obviously don't recommend candles, but have your flashlights have your battery operated lanterns strategically placed so that the instant that it goes out, you can grab it, you can act fast, you can make it so that it's not so stressful to your kids, to your wife, to your husband, whatever. Um, have what? What do you think? Uh, your bathroom or center room in the house, you need to have a plan there for just in case if you know it really gets rocking and rolling, you have a safe room to go to. Um, blankets, pillows, and mattresses are yeah, your mattresses friend. Mattresses are your friend. Everybody sees the pictures of the flooding from uh, New Orleans, but look just over, what was it, Gulfport, uh, Mississippi or something like that? It was like six miles inland was gone. It was just gone. There was nothing there because they got the wind and New Orleans got the, the flooding. You know what I mean? You know, heavy, heavy curtains, yes. mini blinds, close your mini blinds, pull your curtains. You know, that way, if if something came through your window, it would slow it down it might not stop it but it'll slow it down it'll slow the glass and it'll keep the glass kind of contained um i've never subscribed to the theory of putting tape on no, your windows proved that's a, yeah they that, proved that I, I see it every time a hurricane comes yeah. up i see somebody's yeah. putting duct tape and then yeah, they're forever and a day trying to get the duct tape residue off their <laughs> windows it's a lot of goof off you know i mean <laughs> i personally like i said i'm the king of overkill i I know it's not recommended to use, uh, you know, propane lanterns uh, or kerosene yeah, lanterns, kerosene but I have them as a backup for my backup. Right. Um, Tea candles work too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, you know, my kids, my kids have, they're like me. They have a twisted sense of humor. They like when, when we get heavy nor'easters or, or hurricanes come, you know, they, they think it when they were younger, they thought it was pretty cool because, you know, you, it's something that you don't see every day. You, you gotta with kids. You gotta just find a way yeah, to keep them, calm, man. That's the keep them yeah. calm, teach them about it, but keep them safe. Um, you know, I mean, we played a lot of games. We played a lot of hands of of Uno. Yeah, Monopoly here. Yeah, yeah it was Monopoly. Yeah. Um, well, one thing you yeah, picked up on uh, there, Eric, and I, I wanted to um, kind of touch on it is plot. You said something about duct tape and all that. So, uh, my thing with plywood is, as I look at the strength of the storm, obviously I'm not going to spend a day hanging plywood, even though mine's pre-cut and marked and labeled and sitting in my shed back there. Exactly. Uh, I, I have a rule here that category two or better is when I'm going to, or category three or better is when I'm going to plywood because you're looking at the wind strength, you know, you're, when you're talking 70, 80, 90 mile an hour winds, yeah, they suck, but you're not going to have your neighbor's trash can become a projectile and go 350 yards and come through your window. So. Street signs. Yeah, streets. Oh my God, street yes. signs yes. are, are yes. missiles waiting yes, to happen. Um, you know, and if you do plywood, make you can never use too many screws. That's true. Okay. I like screws because they don't back out easily, like some nails. Um, and they do back out easily when you want to take them down. Yeah. But if... You know, if you hang a piece of plywood with with four screws, you know that's you, you almost you're creating a problem because if the wind gets under it, it's going to whip it, and and nobody's going to be happy. Um, but yeah, you can't use too many screws. Yep. Just strategically place them, and you know you can always go back and and caulk the holes yep. when you're done. Um, the first know. house I, I moved in down here actually had lug like uh insets in the in right. the around the window and they were right into the studs so that you could literally just run a lag right into each one and the guy had pre-cut uh i was renting a house at that point he had pre-cut two by fours that went around the edge of the uh plywood i actually always thought that was a really good idea i've never gotten around to it here but that was pretty that was pretty tricky yeah I, that'd be that'd be a cool idea <laughs> if i lived any closer to the uh to the coast right I, I would invest in hurricane shutters and, and stuff like that. Just but, so everybody knows, we're basically 12 to 14 miles 
off of the toe of the ocean. Uh, that's where we particularly live here. So we don't get the major tidal surge that they do on, on the actual coast, uh, but we do get just about everything that they get on the coast too. So. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes worse. And and we hold a lot of water. Yes. You know, it takes a long time for it to to leave us. Um uh, okay, so how about uh after the aftermath? Well, you're pretty much guaranteed you're gonna have trees everywhere. Um I guess you gotta assess your situation. Do you have power? You know, if you don't have power you need to you know, things only last two days, and, and I'm not going to go into flooding and all that because that's an entirely different animal that, you know, we saw down in Texas this year. Uh, you obviously really yeah. need to use your common sense with that, but uh, I don't think anybody could prepare what, for what happened in New Orleans and Texas with that, that flooding. Uh, I mean. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it was literally. Yeah. It was literally like five, six hours in the water. Was yeah, feet deep. I in mean, the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. feet and feet <laughs> deep, so. Go to bed, no water in your house, wake up, and there's two feet of water yeah. in your house. Which brings us to a good point. If you do live in a, you know, and I probably, again, need to do this, take a hammer and a crowbar and stick it in your attic. You know, mm-hmm. and I really need to do that. I, that's something I've been uh, thinking about. But if, I guess assess your situation. Do you have power? If not, what do you have uh, What do you have uh, to do to, you know, feed your family? Uh, if you don't, if you've used all your clean water, start thinking about how you're going to clean water and things like that. Uh assess the damage to your house that's huge because you're going to be missing shingles any kind of any kind of hurricane you're going to be missing shingles you know you might have to get up there and tarp which me and eric had to do recently and uh, you know uh well you're you're responsible for your property yeah The, the the first thing you need to understand is is when you walk out if you don't have power and you see a down power line it's like a gun treat it like it's loaded Treat it like it's hot. Stay away from it. Yes, absolutely. Le- uh, electricity can can jump quite a distance, especially if you're standing in a big puddle of flood yeah. water. For you, um, you know, right. and and if you see a line that's down, have the numbers for your utility company. You know, I'm sure they're going to be busy, but you can log where the down is and and go from there. Mm, that's a, that's a good point. And that yep. brings up one thing that we didn't touch is make sure you have your cell phones charging. You plug them into your phone, into your car charger. Everybody has a car charger nowadays. So, I mean, get your stuff, make your phone calls, let your family know you're okay. Um, sign on to Facebook because I'm sure every member of this group is on some kind of local Facebook page and get an idea what the rest of the world looks like out there. Uh, you know, we've said it numerous times, knowledge is power. We'll collect as much knowledge as you can. If you've gotten out of it, unscathed you know just with power loss and a little shingle loss and stuff like that well the last thing you want to do is just try to drive up the road and you find out there's feet deep water up there so uh you know i don't know common sense yeah <laughs> find out what's going on around you if you're in good shape and the other side of town is in bad shape yeah and you got some friends over there let them know if they can get over to you then more the merrier they you know if they come over with bring some food uh, you know, whatever, uh, come and chill, especially if they got kids or yeah, absolutely. elderly parents. And that's another thing prior to a storm. If you have, uh, uh, your sister lives in town with her two kids, she's divorced and she's got two kids and whatever. She lives in an apartment building, invite them over, you know? Yeah. Uh, if you're confident and, and feel that your location is safe, uh, get friends and family to come over if you don't think their location is as safe as yours. Uh, elderly parents, if you get elderly or say a parent that's in a, a nursing home or something like that, find out what their policy is for evacuation. Yeah, that look at what from happened down in New Way Orleans. prior to, you know, well, you should have found out what it was when you were talking about getting in there. Uh, if there's a, a chance that they're going to be vacuuming where they're going to you back to if there's a chance you could take them uh, out of the nursing home for a few days and handle them at your place, you know, depending on what they're what they're like and their condition is, obviously, uh, that relieves some of the pressure on them too. So then they can give better care to the other people that they have. Uh, you know, it's it obvious. It's all up to you what your situation is. Uh, we can't tell you everything to do, and we can't, you know. We can't tell you to leave if you live in a house that's 
cinder blocked and you know you got the strapping on the roof and there you know you're great and all together but it's all up to you just like everything else is in the prepping world well i know um, everybody fantasizes about the you know hey, you're going to be shooting your neighbors and you know you got these mass hoarding <laughs> gangs coming through and uh, <laughs> jesus <laughs> but i'm, I'm going to tell so you and this is the, this is the truth <laughs> after hurricane sandy man there was there was some areas here that were really hit bad uh with flooding especially and uh you know, there was people just going and donating their time going down to, like I, I mentioned this town, Crisfield, numerous times. They were going down there and helping them rip out drywall, furniture, and carpet and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I mean, I I saw a side, and I can't speak for Eric because yeah, I think he was down mm-hmm. at the beach at that point. But uh, no, you weren't. You were in town, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, you were in town. Yeah. Uh, I've seen neighbors come together and help neighbors. Uh, my neighbor brought his back over here because I lost a tree. He just brought his back over here and shoved it out of the way so that we could move. And, you know, it. it I guess it depends on where you live because you've heard all yeah. the horror stories and all of New Orleans and the rioting and all that. Yeah, and, you know, and the horror stories do, and I've, I'm, I've, it's been driving me nuts for the last three weeks to a month. There's these horror stories of, on other subjects, these horror stories of these these slack jawed millennials and all this crap about you know <laughs> they don't know whatever the hell they're you know they don't know how to do anything they can't open a can of beans or whatever because of that stupid video of that girl opening that can with her can opener um and everybody takes that as that's everybody in the world yeah. you know every millennial is an idiot every millennial is not an idiot <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> uh not <laughs> well i've got three that aren't so <laughs> you got these you got these safe zones in colleges ucla has got a safe zone for, for students because a hundred students wanted it. How many students there are at UCLA? Right, right. It's like thirty-five thousand. So they have a safe zone for a hundred. That's not the majority. That's a that's a freakish minority of people. So we need to get away. This is going to turn into a nice rant. We need to get away from this BS idea that people suck and they're stupid and they're idiots. There, yes, there are people that suck, suck and they're idiots and stupid and idiots, yeah. but the vast majority are not. Uh, look at the all the the great stuff from Houston last year. The, yeah. the people going to the in their boats, yeah, Cajun going to rescue Navy, people. Was yeah. it the Cajun Navy or whatever yeah, coming maybe. in and and helping people? Yes, sir. Uh, member of our page and runs his own page. PG Smith goes down. He's still going down to Houston and helping out. It's a crock of shit. <laughs> that, yeah, no, I agree. That, the, that we're all going to turn on each other and be eating it be eating each other within two <laughs> weeks i've seen that and it's just like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i would seriously leave this rant in <laughs> oh i'm leaving it in it, north. <laughs> this, this 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 notion that we're going to turn on each other you know people watch the road and they're like oh my god look at their eating people well that's like eight years after the event whatever the event was because i never did tell us what the event was um you know, and it's a movie. It's a, it's a, it's a story. It's. <laughs> oh come on! We're not going to have Negan versus Rick in the first two days. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's not one neighbor here that I would throw on the grill. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that's funny. It never ceases to amaze me how a tragedy will bring out the best in people. Yes, absolutely. Oh, it, yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, not to continue the rant, but. You know, just look back at nine eleven. You know, I never, I never waved to so many people in my life after nine eleven happened. Right, right. You know, for for at least six months, we were all one great big neighborhood. We were all one great big family. We all suffered loss in in one way or another. So you know, I think tragedies bring out the best in in people for the most part. I mean, of course, you're going to have opportunistic people, but that's why we're armed. Yeah, right. I can neither that's confirm why we're or deny. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and that's why we stress situa- situational awareness. You exactly. Know, I mean, there, there's there's dickheads everywhere, uh, but to to think that the majority of people are dickheads is just uh, kind of asinine. You know that the the first hurricane was coming into Florida, and they sh- that one video of some people breaking into like a Nike store or something. Oh, right, that right. Was, that, played for weeks and weeks and, and people were just grinding at the gears be- and it was one video we never saw any other videos of of looting and whatever 
you know, and this was even before the hurricane hit. Stores have just been closed and whatever. But yeah, so. Uh, well, and you know, I've, I've heard more. a lot of the people on the on the page pages point out Puerto Rico, and yeah. you really can't compare anything that's going on in Puerto Rico with the power grid and everything else to anything that's going on here. I mean, if you live in a if you live on the coast and you're in a, any kind of house that was built within the last 25 years, it's up on some pretty big hurricane codes, you know. And if you were in a house that's 100 years old, she's seen a whole lot more than you're ever going to say. So, um, yeah. It's, it's still not, standing. It's not like we're living in, in you know, the back country, I guess, uh, is what I'm saying. You can't compare what they're doing in Haiti and uh, some of those other countries and stuff that, that get creamed. Uh, that's not yeah, comparable. Yeah, a small to island nation yeah. where... They make $5 a week. Is acceptable. Uh, Puerto Rico is known prior to the hurricanes for corruption. Right. Uh, they've got... You know, and the power company was known to be horrible. So how are they going to, obviously, is it it's a, su- a surprise to anybody that they still have problems with power in Puerto Rico right. a year later? Because they had problems with power in Puerto Rico before the hurricane. Right. So, um, it, <laughs> yeah, the it's, power it company wants you to have overnight. power here because they're, they ain't making money unless they're giving you power. So they're going to really, really want you to have oh, power yeah. back quick. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like Flint. With right. the water. Well, you know, you can replace main lines quickly. You can't replace lines into the homes right. very quickly. It takes a long time to do that, especially if <laughs> we can't just bring every plumber from the entire country to Flint, Michigan to fix it because then stuff everywhere else will fail too. So, um, okay, off the ranch for a while. Right on. Uh, after <laughs> so afterwards. Uh, you, you got your, you know, your job, who knows when they'd call you back up. So, but you have to be prepared to, if your job opens up, let's say your job is someplace that didn't get hit that bad and you have to go back to work cause you got to pay the bills and they need you. Uh, and what if your daycare isn't open yet? And you know, that's kind of stuff you need to At least, have a viable yeah. option of, of thinking who, how are we going to handle this? Scenario it out in your mind, you know? I mean, that's something that you can sit there and think about during the wintertime. What am I going to do if? And uh, that's something yeah. you should be doing yeah. is what do I do? It might if? be a reason to bring your your sister over with her two kids. Cause now exactly. It, you know, maybe she doesn't go back to work right away or maybe she works a different shift than you do or, or your wife does or whatever. And, and you can trade off or your neighbor isn't back to work yet. So the neighbor comes over or your kids go over to the neighbor's house and you go to work and you whatever, you know, come back with Burger King. Because you're tired of curling yourself, the burger cane tastes so good. So uh, <laughs> that uh, water, you know, you touched on your if you have a well, to so be careful of that. If you, we didn't touch on it during, but it worked for the after too. Uh, some kind of purification, whether it's even just personal, like a, mini a, Sawyer, a mini or Sawyer, or a bigger one like a Berkey. Uh, you know, some kind of system like that to purify any water that you have to collect. If you do collect any, like rainwater or whatever, um, if you run out of water, um, food, obviously you want to have food on hand. And so for whatever amount of time, so you may be eating toward the end, you might be eating some crap you didn't want to eat, but, uh, and you got to have a way to prepare it and you might be without power for, weeks so. and that you know if you're without power the first thing you need to be preparing is the stuff that's in your refrigerator then you move on to your yep. freezer yep. and then you move on to your canned goods and your stuff that you know you know, don't bust into your mountain house freeze-dried food the first day when you've got four and a half pounds of chicken wings in the refrigerator you know what i'm saying yeah. so think yeah. smart yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, eat it in a, in a rotational manner yes uh, and you know, I mean, eat the freeze stuff last. That's something. That's something we didn't touch during the before. Is and, and I personally do it. Is I freeze as much water as I possibly can mm-hmm. and stick it in my refrigerator and uh, freezer. Oh yeah. So yeah. that you know, I, I'm fortunate at this point. I've got the generator. I've got the solar, so I can run that if I have to. But I'm talking ten years ago when I first moved down here. That was one of the first things I do. Is you okay? Tropical storm, hurricane, whatever's coming. 
take every Tupperware. We all have 10,000 Tupperware containers without a freaking lid. So just take every one of them, stick them in the fridge, take them in the freezer, let yeah. them cool down, you know. Um, every summer I make blocks. Plus, ice. then you have yeah. water when it thaws out. Yeah, and then you, exactly, you got yep. drinkable water when yep. it thaws. So, uh, you know, use, I, use your common sense on that stuff because there's a lot of stuff you can do. Yeah, I take dish pans from uh, like the dollar store. Yeah. And I, I freeze block ice because I do a lot of surf fishing. Right. And, you know, I'm notoriously cheap, so I don't like to buy ice if I can make it. And, you know, the block ice lasts longer than the bag ice. Um, but that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. And if you want to get really creative, what's the, uh, what's the ice mixed with, uh, with paper? What do they call that? Um, paper mache? No. Um, crap. I can't remember what it is. If you mix it with like shredded paper and whatnot and sawdust, it they wanted to make an aircraft carrier out of it. In World War II. Okay. I have no idea what you're talking uh, about. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't remember. I'm gonna Google it here while I'm talking. Um, oh crap! What the heck? It, but it lasts for a long, long, long. Oh, you're talking about like for for brick, uh, for building a fire or something? No. No? Um, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Hang on. Pycrete. I've never heard of I've that. I've never heard of that either. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, you could, If you want to get really adventurous, you can pre-make some pycrete. Uh, it's it's a frozen, it says frozen composite material originally made of approximately 14% sawdust or some other form of wood pulp, such as paper. And 86% ice by weight. Um, it was it came, it came up with by a guy named uh, Jeffrey Pike, uh, and he wanted to make an aircraft carrier out of it for the Royal Navy. <laughs> right, but but what it, do we do with it? In it's the con- it's com- it obviously could float around in the ocean and not thaw out. Uh, and physical properties can make the material comparable to concrete. All right. But it, it takes because it's got that mixture in it. It takes a lot longer, a lot longer to to uh, thaw out than uh, it does regular ice. I got you. So, well, it's used- not it's it's not the greatest thing for keeping stuff really cold, but it lasts. The ice would last last a lot longer. So, uh, it's more of a it. of a building material type thing than you know. But it's it's eighty six percent ice, so it's going to be cold. But that's a that's that would be a project right now, not two days prior. <laughs> so, um, other stuff that afterwards, uh, just you might have to leave after. Um, I had a, a buddy that's that was in New Orleans or outside of New Orleans after in, during Katrina. His house was perfectly fine. Um, yeah, it's a lovely thing. It had a chunk, a, a section of his fence blew over, and he lost some shingles on his garage, I think, if I remember right. Uh, but he decided to leave when the mall that was three miles away from him burned because there was looting. Uh, so he was like, nah, we're not going to sit around and wait for this crap to happen right. to us. So he loaded up their vehicles and attached his boat to his truck and threw extra more crap into his, into his uh, boat. On the trailer and took off and ran into uh, a police roadblock uh, a few blocks from his house. He knew one of the officers in a roundabout way. Uh, he ended up leaving them five gallons of gas and a box of shells. So, and then he took off and left. And I think he left and was he? I think he was only gone for a week, week and a half, and then he went. They went back home, but nothing ever happened to their house. But, That's good. Uh, you may have to leave afterwards, so be prepared to that in case there's some kind of issue. Well, I think everything that we've covered with afterwards is just assess your property damage, you know, assess the situation in the community you're at, you know, uh, assess what your needs are at that point, when, you know, yeah. food, water, et cetera, and uh, make a decision mm-hmm. on of that and, you know, check on your family. Your, your family might have lost a roof, um, you know, two towns over or something. So um, I, I really can't think of too much afterwards. Obviously, you're going to have clean up. You're going to have tree limbs down. If it's any kind of hurricane, I'm not talking like a stiff breeze. I'm talking a legitimate hurricane. Uh, information is power. I think we covered that with getting on Facebook. Turn on your local news. 
Um, as much as most of us probably hate our local news, turn on your local news because they're going to have it and they're going to show you where the hotspots are. So, you know, where to yeah. go. Um, if you have flooding, have, have, have someone outside of your area, even if it's, uh, yeah, you're, if you're 300 yeah. miles away. Uh, if, if you're short of supplies in your area for whatever, you know, uh, if you've got a family member or a friend or whomever that lives, you know, even three, 400 miles away or 200 miles away, uh, and you can get a hold of them, see if they'll pick up some stuff, you know, we, and bring it to you or bring it partway to you and you get out of your area and go pick it up. And then, you know, that's just make your own little supply route. Don't worry about Walmart getting resupplied right? or Piggly Wiggly or whatever. Uh, resupply yourself. You know, it's, it, you take a little bit of the burden off the entire system. That makes it easier for people who don't have that ability uh, to get uh, their, you know, life taken care of. Uh, it's, it, we just have to look out for everybody else. You know, it's, I, I, I know the, it's, yeah, that goes against what a lot of people say, but you know, truth yeah, be told, back that's to the not rant. how it works. Yeah. Uh, back to the rant. Don't be the dick. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. And, and the big, my biggest thing is, is water and, and everybody has seen the pictures of the grocery stores and Walmart and, you can't buy a bottle of water. So, you know, we go back to the after. Okay. You've gone through flushing your toilet water and you've, you know, you spent two days in your house basically for a hurricane, a legitimate hurricane and you're stuck in there. So you might've went through some of your water. So if you know, if you're getting low, that should be your first priority is what am I going to do? Cause hurricanes don't, you know, you lose power, you don't have air conditioning, and it's usually humid as hell after a hurricane, and it's usually hot as hell, and you're going to be sitting there frying, and your kids are going to be saying how they're thirsty and everything else, and water has become a necessity really, really, really quickly, so have a plan. I would throw some solar up on my roof and make sure my kids can play the video game. Well, I'm, I'm already there. Buddy. I'm already there. <laughs> I'll be turning my well on. You better guarantee that. Like, we're out of power for a week and a half, I we might not have kids left. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of water and afterwards, you might want to try to, before the hurricane comes, get the uh, number of a testing lab so that yes. after the hurricane's over, you, you draw a sample of your water and have it tested to see if it's still potable. Um, mm -hmm. You know, then you can address that problem. Yep. Now, I don't know about your town, but my, our town here come and test our wells. They came over and they had a testing that they did right then and there. Oh. So we, uh, we, uh, fortunately in this situation, I'm on public water and yeah, sewer. Yeah. But unfortunately, right, I got I'm on public yeah, water and sewer. Yeah, right, I got you. So, <laughs> yeah. So we're on a well here and they, they came around and tested the water that the actual township did. And I don't know if that's a normal thing or not, but that's what happened here. And I think it was the health department too. Maryland Health Department come out here okay. and checked everything. So yeah, check with your, uh, Check with your local authorities before, even beforehand. Yeah. Would you come out and check water before? And, and when in doubt, uh, bowl it. You know, when in, if you really have a doubt, just bowl your water. It, you know. It, it. Yeah. 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 So, okay. Uh, I think we've covered. Yeah, just about everything. Just uh, again, back to the situationally where, I mean, it's hurricane season. It's coming up. Uh, there's a good chance. We already saw that storm come up through the Gulf that dumped a lot of rain, um, you know, and then it was last week. So um, check those websites out that Skip mentioned earlier in, in the podcast. Uh, I'll make sure I have most of them, or if not all of them, possibly listed on the website. I, I also have on the Facebook page, there also also is a, a weather. I did one for the, like, the entire world. <laughs> There's a couple for the states. Uh, there's one for uh, Europe, there's one for uh, the, the Philippines area, there's one for Australia, there's one for India, because that's where a majority of our uh, members are from, in, of those areas. And then there, But then there's a whole world weather one that, so. Pete, that, there's uh, one thing I actually do that just came to my mind that I would like to touch on real quick, and we've all seen our friend on Facebook that shares the one picture of the model of a hurricane that makes it look like the world is going to end where you live. Okay. And, and you can get caught up in some of these little, uh, fly by night weather pages and stuff like that. Don't go by them. And if your friends shows 
some model that's projecting you to get slammed with a Category 5, and it's the only one that's showing you getting slammed with a Category 5, just cruise over to the National Hurricane Center. They have a what they call a cone of uncertainty. It's a yellow track where the hurricane could f- eye could fall anywhere in there and make your own, you know, just don't uh, fall for the stuff you see on Facebook because, you know, it's on the Internet. It's not true. I just wanted to stick that it's in there. It's a catch twenty two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't listen to prepper pages, but listen to prepper pages. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, we've all seen the world's going to end yeah. like ten times this summer or this winter alone. So I mean, just yeah. Oh yeah. Well, well that's, that's our super. Bowl. Summer was yeah, good. right. We've done. Yellowstone. It hasn't blown yet. We'll be getting some hate mail over that one. <laughs> and no nuclear war with North Korea. And we have people. Those people that no, were it's Iran this week, last buddy. year from the West Coast. No, it's I Iran this week. Move. I guess we'll wrap it up. Eric, any final thoughts at all? Uh, no, just safety, safety, safety. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're your own first responder for everything in life. Exactly. Uh, situationally, where med kit, we didn't touch on, uh, t- t- touch on med medical well, kits. Well, I kind of assume um, that people are preppers. They should have a first aid kit, so maybe I'm well, assuming too much. And I hope we get a few people that aren't preppers that listen to True. and then become, you know, at least aware of what they should do um prescriptions uh get in there you know if you're getting low call up your pharmacy get it refilled uh if you have to have uh, like insulin that needs to be kept cold make sure you have it just you know forget about your food if you need insulin make sure you have some way to get it because <laughs> yeah. you can go you know it would be an awful 30 days without food but uh you know you can go a good amount of time without substantial calories so, but if you need insulin, you need insulin. So make sure you, you know, get that, that covered. Uh, I hope someone who's diabetic and needs insulin already has that uh, figured out. But, um, and just, you know, have a first aid, a good first aid kit on hand. Whether you go buy one that's pre-made at Walmart or Target or Sam's Club or wherever, at least that. And then add on to it if you want. Get some, you know, if you're out, picking up debris and you get scratched by a nail or something like that and you get that sucker cleaned out. So, you know, go in and get your tetanus shots. Go in, uh, you know, go to the doctor now. Get a physical, that kind of crap. You know, it's it's everyday, that's everyday prep stuff. Right. Know? But it's majorly important if you have to be cleaning up a, a lot of debris in your yard or uh, up on your roof uh, hammering or screwing on two by fours under your roof, uh, you, hopefully you're in uh, good shape to do that. So, uh, but I think I'll wrap it up. Um, thanks, Eric, for joining us. Thanks for having me. And, uh, uh, make sure you check us out on uh, obviously the Facebook page and uh, at 21stCenturyPrepper.net uh, on the website for the website. Thank you.